And of course, we also have things called black holes. These are very, very interesting, and we can do a whole series of videos on black holes. But what I'm going to do is just give you the basic, basic stuff here. A black hole is an object where the escape velocity, remember before we were looking at the escape velocity, which was 2 times g times m over r uh, square rooted. It just happens to be something where the escape velocity is c. In other words, the uh, escape velocity equals the speed of light. Speed of light. So what that means is this right here, we set c equal to 2gm over r. And it turns out what you can do then with this, you can see, well, that's really interesting. So this is sort of a, a theoretical thing. It was first looked at, well, could there be an object whose mass is so large that, or its radius is so small, see it's a combination of the two, but whose conditions are such that the escape velocity is so large it's actually the speed of light. And this is actually what we consider a black hole to be. So let's just say we took this right here. We can go a little bit further. We can actually find the radius, or at least something interesting about a black hole. So a black hole, remember, that's the other result of a supernova. So if we have a really, really massive star, and it goes supernova, I think we had that up, uh, I'm just trying to show you a slide before here. If we had this slide right here, so when we had this, if a stellar remnant was greater than 1.4 solar masses, it goes into a supernova, and if its mass was large enough, then it could make, I mean, either it makes a neutron star, we've looked at those, or it makes a black hole. And what this black hole is then, it's defined as something whose, well, it's a little bit tough to define it exactly, because they're a little bit sort of strange objects, these things, these black holes. But one way to look at a black hole would be it's something that has an escape velocity that is equal to the speed of light. In other words, we could say a black hole is something like this. Uh, black holes are often given uh, based on their density. So there what we mean is you know, what their um, mass is per unit volume. So we see their density is extremely high. Now they may do really strange things, like some people think they cause a singularity in uh, space-time, and so that causes really strange things to happen. And like I said, we can do a whole series of videos actually on black holes. I'm just giving a quick introduction here. But here if we want to find out what radius you would need in order to make something, you know, a black hole, we have this very special r value. Turns out if we take this equation right here, we try to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to square both sides. So I get c squared equals 2gm over r. And then if I just solve for r, I get r equals 2gm over c squared. And it turns out this right here is actually called the Schwarzschild radius. This is actually a special value. So when scientists are talking about black holes, they often talk about a Schwarzschild radius. And that is the distance at which this, the escape velocity is the speed of light. So this right here is pretty interesting, I think. So what you can do with this, you can calculate, okay, uh, for any object of any mass, you could calculate essentially how small you would have to squish it. In other words, how small would you, you know, sort of have to make this object, so what radius would it have to be in order to make it a black hole? From that, you can calculate, for example, a person. You can put in your own mass here and calculate what the radius would be. You find out that it's extremely, extremely small. Because remember, the speed of light is a very large number here, so dividing by a large number squared makes this extremely small. So that tells us something about the radius or is it something about the size of a black hole? So what's really neat about black holes is this. We have a black hole at the center of our own galaxy. If you know your constellations, this is the constellation Sagittarius. I always thought, you know, it kind of looks like a pot, sort of like a teapot or something. And if you're looking up in the sky, you'll see this beautiful Milky Way. But if you know where Sagittarius is, somewhere around here is a star. It's a little bit hard to see because there's a lot of messy stuff but it's actually called Sagittarius A star. That is the location of the black hole at the center of our own galaxy. Now what's really cool about it is this. Scientists, I mean, it was actually very difficult, first of all, to see what's going on there, but when, when people finally figured out what color of light, essentially, to, to use in order to see it, they were looking right at the center. This is Sagittarius A star, this location right here. And what they noticed was this. There were some 
actual stars which we can see. Okay, so these are here were actual objects we can see here. This is a theoretical place that we can't actually see anything happening here. But if you use a telescope and over a certain amount of years, you could see, for example, over here in 1995, there was a red dot here, and then the same star in 1996 was here, then it was here, then it was here, then it was here. Same thing with this star over here. It started off here, went tit, 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 over the years. This one over here went tit, 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 tit. another star did this, another star did this. And so what they noticed was this, that although there's, an, there's something that we can't see here, so I mean you can take a picture of this and you don't see much, but what you do, you take a picture of the stars around it. So there are these stars, they've named them S stars. I'll show you a bit of a better uh, picture here, a bit of a better graph here. So in this graph right here, these are the orbits of the stars in our galactic center. They didn't know at first that there was a black hole in the center. They just started looking at, here's this central location, which they don't really see much happening. But what they did is they noticed these stars. They named them. So they named them you know, S2 and S1 and S12 and 14 and 13 and 8, for example. And they noticed, I mean, looking at those pictures of what they did, they can estimate their orbits. So they have different orbits, but they all seem to be orbiting, all of them seem to be orbiting some unseen object right in the center. And it turns out, by being a little bit clever, you can actually calculate, due to its orbit, of this thing that you can see, you can calculate the mass of the thing that it's orbiting. So what's really cool is you can see unseen things can be detected using things you can see. So these stars here are in happy orbits. You know, going around this central object here, and they're all elliptical orbits, and each of them, you can use each of their orbits independently to calculate the mass of the thing in the center. And they all seem to agree to and sort of end up with the fact that we have a black hole in the center of our galaxy. Whoops, that was a really bad way to say that. So we actually know the mass of the black hole. Turns out the mass of the black hole, the center, this central object, is around. It's approximately 4 times 10 to the 6 solar masses. In other words, the black hole at the center of our galaxy is around, so M black hole is approximately 4 million times the mass of the sun. So this is huge. And now, they know that it is very likely an actual black hole just because it turns out they can look at these different orbits and from the smallest orbit they can say, well, this object must be smaller than this, at least. In order for this thing to be orbiting it, it can't be this size or else it would be part of it. So they can already have some constraints on it. And by looking at where it sits, they can sort of constrain its size. And if you look at this then, it's mass, which you can calculate, and then if you estimate its size, you can then estimate its density. And its density is something that we don't understand. I mean, it's, it's on the order of you know, much more than uh, neutron stars are. So it does really, really weird stuff that's going on here. That's, that's really, really strange. So this was sort of the start of, of looking for massive black holes. And the question, of course, that's interesting, I think, is, you know, well, if there's a center, if there's a big black hole at the center of our own galaxy, what, what about other galaxies? And it turns out that most other galaxies also have black holes in their centers. So it turns out now that not only is there a black hole at the center of our own, but it turns out almost every galaxy you look at, it also seems to have a black hole in the center of it. This is actually a picture that I took of a galaxy called NGC, uh, I think it's 7479. So this is just a regular old spiral galaxy. And it turns out this one also has a black hole in the center if you look at it the right way, if you can sort of use some clever tactics to detect it. And it turns out this thing right here is spinning one way, and it turns out that it's, uh, well, something about the black hole is actually spinning the opposite way, which is really weird. I'm not, I'm not sure why that is. That seems really strange to me. And another thing is that um, a lot of black holes, or a lot of galaxies, can actually have active nuclei, which means, you know, the center of this particular um, Galaxy. So let's say we're looking at some sort of galaxy, some sort of spiral galaxy, so some sort of thing that sort of goes like this right here, if we're looking at it sort of from the side. It turns out that if we're lined up with it, it actually gives off some light. So these black holes can sort of, even though we can't see them, we can actually see some weird stuff. We see some sort of weird light coming from them.
It turns out we think that that's what happens when a black hole is eating material. Now, one thing I wanted to point out is this about a black hole. I think it's an interesting fact. A lot of people think that everything in our galaxy is sort of going around the central black hole. Technically, I suppose that's true because a black hole is in the center. But it doesn't mean that everything's sort of spiraling into it. It's not that, you know, if you have a black hole near you, you're all going to sort of die as you go towards it. It's just an object, although it's really weird, it's just an object that has a lot of mass and in a very, very small space, right? So it has a very high density. And that means that you can have stars in happy, stable orbits around them. And in fact, you can have lots of other things going around. Now, in our own galaxy, the very fact that we're going around, it's actually not because we're all going around this one object. It turns out we're all sort of going around each other. You know, because there's lots and lots of stars in our own galaxy. There are billions of them. And all the stars and all the gas are all affecting each other. So we're all in this sort of gravitational dance. You know, it's like if you have like two people who are holding hands and leaning back and sort of spinning around. We all sort of spin around each other. But there just happens to be a really super duper, insanely massive black hole right at the center. And all this led to some scientists saying, well, if there's a black hole at the center of our own, and there's a black hole at the center of other galaxies, maybe galaxies and black holes are intimately related. In other words, um, you know, are black holes formed and then galaxies around them? Or do galaxies form with black holes in the center? So this is sort of a, a new branch of science that you know, can be definitely looked at. But all this to explain that black holes are really, really interesting, although they're very, very strange. And we actually have this massive black hole right at the center of our own galaxy.